welcome to another Monday Morning Pastor, where we look at a point or two from yesterday's sermon to help us begin our week. Do you remember the local bookstore back in the day before the internet, before Amazon, when you, if you wanted a book, you had to go to a local bookstore, hope it was on the shelf or order it. We had a bookstore in Inferno called Cornerstone Books. It was on 3rd Street. I remember distinctly in early 1989, and the year is important, going into the bookstore and noticing in the discount clearance bin a book called 88 Reasons Why the Rapture Will Occur in 1988. Again, 88 Reasons Why the Rapture Will Occur in 1988 by Edgar Wisenot. And I thought about that book this weekend and I did some research on it. That book was printed 3.2 million copies. 3.0 million copies were printed and over a quarter million were sent to pastors and churches throughout the United States. And this guy wasn't a goofball, he wasn't an idiot. Well, maybe he was a goofball, but he wasn't an idiot. This guy was a NASA engineer and a serious Bible student. And he was super confident that Jesus would come back in 1988. Regarding his book, he said this, only if the Bible is an error am I wrong. And I say that to every preacher in town. And if I could gamble with my life, I would stake my life that in 1988, Jesus will come back. Well, that's a high level of confidence. But alas, 1988 came and went. And in early 1989, I found his book, Collecting Dust in the 25 cent clearance bin at our local Cornerstone bookstore. So what, we, what might we be able to learn from Mr. Wisenant? Well, in our church, we have just begun a series of messages using two books in the New Testament, first and second Thessalonians. These are letters written by Paul to the church at Thessalonica in Greece, the second largest city in Greece. And each chapter of these two books, totaling eight chapters, each chapter touches on the theme of eschatology or the study of final things like the rapture, like the second coming, like the last days. And our friend, Mr. Wisenant, whose book didn't age very well, still provides some lessons for us as we study passages related to final events. Lesson one. We need to tread humbly and hesitantly when interpreting and trying to sort out the biblical details related to the last days. Needless to say, we shouldn't make date predictions. You know, if you look at history, there have been some world-changing events that have tempted Bible students to make predictions. We had the, the rise of Hitler, the rise of Stalin, suggesting they were this antichrist person. We've had the uh, formation or the restoration of the nation of Israel in 1948. That got Bible students all excited. We have the rise of the Soviet Union, and some people thought they could find the Soviet Union in scripture prophecy. Y2K, a lot of these events motivated people to try to put, to try to make predictions and give us dates. It never turns out very well for those people. Lesson number two is that we need to focus and use as our foundation the clearest and most consistent passages of scripture when we formulate the theology of last times. I would like to read one of those passages now, which is from our book of 1 Thessalonians, the first chapter. It's related to the final days, but it couldn't be any clearer. And these are the types of passages that we need to focus on and have as our foundational thinking. It's in chapter one of 1 Thessalonians, it's verses nine and 10. We heard how you turn, speaking to the Thessalonians, how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God. 
and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. I'd like to invite you to join us each Sunday here at 10 o'clock as we go through these eight chapters, five in 1 Thessalonians, three in 2 Thessalonians, and we're going to study together what the Bible really says about the end times. Thanks for watching and have a great week.